I have a huge imagination. Yes, it can get pretty vivid. I can zone out and just be in my own little world for a while. I realized it was time to humble myself and take my desires to God so that His will will become my will. Hello, beautiful people. It's Imani. I'm back with another Monday mindset episode where we're going to take the time to just shift our minds on the things of the Lord and the good promises God has for us and not on any limiting beliefs or the things that honestly Jesus didn't die for. Today, I want to talk about Proverbs 19:21. It's real short. It's real simple, but it really penetrates to the heart. And I'm going to read out of the NLT version. It simply says, you can make many plans, but the Lord's purposes will prevail. That's it. It's just that simple. And while it is simple, that doesn't mean it's easy. So let me just tell you why this verse came to my heart and just get really personal with you all. Like I have a huge imagination. Yes, it can get pretty vivid. I can zone out and just be in my own little world for a while. Other people have always called me a daydreamer, but I consider myself a visionary. And so <laughs> with that said, I know what it means to like have all these plans in my heart. I can see it. I can almost feel it. I want it now. And they're just so real. I don't know if anyone else can relate, but that's just how my brain works. So specifically around the subject of motherhood, I really had a idea and a plan kind of my whole life, not the details, but just an idea of what I was going to experience in my life. I just knew I was going to have kids before 30, like 30 seemed old. My mom had me when she was 27 and it just seemed like that's how things should be but i didn't get married until i was 29 <laughs> like big laugh out loud on that one and then my husband and i we knew we wanted to like wait a year to just get used to being newlyweds and having fun traveling um and so when we did start trying it took a whole a whole year to even conceive. And that pregnancy ended in a miscarriage. Then another two years passed of trying. And then we started to see a reproductive endocrinologist and boom, shortly after that we were pregnant. But when we became pregnant, it was a really tough time in my life. My mom had just been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. She had been going through chemo, radiation, and was getting ready for a major surgery. Actually, the day that I found out that she we were pregnant was the day before she had surgery and so like as you can see throughout this story like nothing is going according to my plan i remember meditating on this verse when i was caring for my mom as she was battling cancer and i really realized like i can have this idea of how god should show up i can have an idea and a plan and and not just for my life and the things that i want but a, a plan for God, you know? I just knew that he, he was gonna get all the glory in her miraculously being healed. She, He was gonna prove to all of um, these people that miracles still happen and people are still healed of like from ridiculous, impossible situations. I had a plan for God. And when the Holy Spirit reminded me of this scripture, at the moment, I just took it in and I meditated on it, um, but it really humbled me. The reality is this proverb, which Proverbs is a book of wisdom, they're not commands, they're just a variety of wisdoms written by um, Solomon, King Solomon. And what this wisdom is telling us is exactly what we see in life all the time. We have these plans, they are often for our good, a lot of times for God's glory, but God has the ultimate view of all of eternity. And so his will will always prevail. And we may not understand it in the moment. If we trust God for his word, we can trust that we, the, the circumstances that do end up coming to pass will be for our good and for his glory. And the reality is God's will will always be done. And this verse allowed me to realize it's time to humble myself and take my desires to God so that his will will become my will because that is what will always prevail. And that also means that he's going to do what's best for me and what's best for you. But that isn't always going to mean we're going to get what we want. It doesn't always mean it's going to feel good. And in those moments, even though I'm not getting what I want, I can bet that his will will always be better. Now, I may not see that in the moment. I may not even get an explanation on this side of eternity. But God's character is so solid and his word is so sure. It's an opportunity to trust the God of the universe who not only gave me this life, but who knows me intimately, who loves me who wants the best for me and will do what's best for me. The reason that our plans don't match up with God's 
God's plans is because we want to be comfortable and we want to be in the center of our story. And God knows ultimately that's not what's best for us. And so God's will is that we would reflect Jesus and that God would be at the center of the story. My story, your story, I think of it like a Venn diagram where some areas will overlap, but ultimately there are areas in these two plans that will never align. And so the amazing thing is that God is so loving. He's so considerate of us that we don't have to just work with our life experience in order to trust him. He's given us the Bible and he's given us other people in our lives to be able to see his faithfulness. There is evidence everywhere of his plan being better. And that's why our testimonies are so important. And so as we reflect on Proverbs 19, 21, I just have a question for you and for me to ponder and to think and to meditate on. Um, if you knew that God's plan for you would bring more joy, more purpose, more peace than anything you could create on your own, what would you be willing to surrender today? And another question I have that I've been asking myself as well is think about moments in your life where things didn't go the way you planned, but ended up exactly where you needed to be. Really think about, could God be behind these detours in your life? Like not the enemy, not your flesh, but truly God be the one that's saying no to your wildest dreams and giving you something even better. And so on that note, if this resonated with you, please share with someone that would also get a lot from this episode. Go ahead and let me know what the Lord reveals to you as you ask yourself those questions and send me an email or send me a message on TikTok or Instagram at Confident Care Birth Co. And I would just love to talk with you more about it and even share some of the insights that I have and experience that I have. And so I look forward to talking with you all in the next episode.